three, three, uh. two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Reality Game Form Survivor Podcast. I am your host, Colin Connors. With me, as always, is my wonderful co-host, Prince Ty. It's a really good fucking evening. Yeah. I also have with me the amazing Elise Anderson. Hello. And the spectacularly beautiful and whose love of hags may not be completely unbearable this season, Stephen Lehman. <laughs> Hi, Colin. And the other half of the Latina flavor, Jack. Hey there. And we're here to talk about the amazing first episode of Survivor, Worlds Apart, No Collar, Blue Collar Brains, Beauty, and... We have a lot to cover. It was a 90-minute episode. Everyone got confessionals. I do just want to get a quick poll of everyone here, all the panelists. Was it a good, great, amazing, or a kind of shitty episode? At least, real quick. I thought it was of... pretty good. I liked it. It was great. <laughs> Ty, what do you think? It was great. We were introduced to a lot of good characters, and um, the shitty people lost, so it's good. Yep. Jack. <laughs> really going. Um, I liked it. I didn't really pay much attention preseason, like watching cast videos, so I was going in blind. Um, so I appreciated getting to see everyone for the first time during the episode. And Stephen, what about you? Uh, I really, really enjoyed it. I'd, I'd give it great. I thought it was a really enjoyable premiere. And I'm on the same part with you. I think this might be one of my favorite premiere episodes ever. And I have to say, uh, I know Jack, you weren't following much preseason, but if you're following this at all preseason, Jeff Probst keeps saying. This season's amazing. It's really good. It's really great. And he did stop doing that after everyone didn't immediately fall in love with Caramon. So I was really hesitant, but I was like, Jeff Probst says it's great. And honestly, this first episode, it set up everything beautifully. It was a beautiful tribal council. I am just so damn excited. But we need to Brains go to the... too. This time they're richer. Exactly. <laughs> Actually, that's a fantastic <laughs> name. Brains too. This time they're richer. <laughs> yes. Anyways, I want to go to the very beginning. Uh, it started off with the regular... A bunch of people getting confessionals, and it, but this time it wasn't just four. I feel like right off the bat, does anyone have a confessional count? I feel like we saw eight confessionals in that first little bit. We saw an absurd amount, which was nice. Yeah, it was a really nice mm -hmm. amount. Indeed. Okay, and then we got to the twist, which I may not be a best big fan of, but it told us a lot about what to expect from this season. I want to hear at least what did you think about uh, Joaquin basically volunteering and then picking so. Uh, well, I think both of them are kind of dumb, but <laughs> that's just the <laughs> two of them being themselves. Uh, I actually, I think I didn't like the twist so much, but I like that they're going for choices. Like we see that in the challenge too. It's all about choices this season, at least in the first episode. Okay. And then, uh, Ty, what did you think about the, uh, Dan, uh, Mike situation? Um, if you notice, we saw Mike volunteer Dan first, which I thought that was really fucking clever. Well, yeah, it was. I mean, I think it's going to bite them in the ass the way the rest of the episode played out. Um, but to the degree that, you know, it was, it was a smooth enough move. And I wasn't surprised because you figure Dan's the oldest person there. Mike's the biggest, strongest person there. So if I'm being thrust into the leadership role and I need something to buffer that, I would probably pick the biggest guy there to try to take some of the heat off of being the leader. So uh, he didn't do much good this episode, but if Dan made a smart move, that was probably it. Well, I was going to say, I feel like Mike at first made a smart move by volunteering Dan. And that made me think, like, yeah. holy shit, Mike is, you know, a player. But then Dan turned around. Then he and ate a fucking scorpion. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, then Mike volunteered afterwards and then ate a scorpion, which made me think Mike might actually not actually be that smart. That's <laughs> oh, so. Not not so much. Sid <laughs> reminds me, or, uh, at this point, he kind of reminds me of, he also reminds me of wrestler Sid Vicious based on how he talks, but he reminds me of Tarzan with a haircut. That's kind Tarzan. of my impression of Mike. <laughs> I was getting uh, a little Troy's bit of a, in. yeah, Troy's Troy's almost a little Brad, Brad Culpepper-ish. Um, <laughs> but Jack, let's talk about no collars. We had Will, and then Will picked Jen, and Jen's going to be my future wife, but that's an earlier conversation. <laughs> what did you make of that? Um... Yeah, I could. There's definitely dysfunction in the no collar, like fitting of the name. They decided to go with Will because he promised sandwiches, and then, but he seemed to have a good vibe from Jen and immediately picked her, which was different than how they picked the first, um, first leader of their tribe. But I definitely like how, in past seasons, they've only had one person be this leader and have to make the choice. But I think the introduction of having two people, and now you have someone else who knows exactly what you did. And you have to weigh whether or not you want to trust this person or 
uh, work for the tribe or just work for yourself. So that's a new dynamic that definitely makes the game more interesting. I will say, as much as I don't like the choice uh, twist, I do think it's a little bit better if the two people. However, my assumption right off the bat was when I saw it was with two people was that everyone would be honest because that's the smarter play to do. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. but then uh, you remember that Joaquin is a fucking meat. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I, I wanted to actually talk hey. to Stephen about this. Um, <laughs> Do you think on the blue collar tribe, Stephen, that Rodney or Mike or Dan would have picked it if they were by themselves? Because that's the um, vibe I, I was getting. I was gonna say I think if you're by yourself, you don't have to coordinate with another person, and I think it makes it a lot easier to say, well, you know, I did X, but I really did Y. But I think when you have two people making the decision, you have to get your story straight. And I don't want to say it necessarily relegates you to being in an alliance with some person, but it it definitely makes you cross your stories to make sure that there's no holes in that. And I think. Uh, had there only been one person making the decision, it wouldn't have been as uh, as much of a decision. Well, I'm talking specifically about Dan and Mike because I feel like they both wanted to make the bad decision. Oh, yeah, I think decision. they both wanted to do the idle clue, but yeah. I think both of them realized that it, with this point with two people and having to cover your tracks, I don't think it was yeah. – the and, most intelligent move. And to bring us to the end of the episode, it's kind of funny how Mike and Dan were like, wait, it's actually really dumb to be a villain this early on. It, nothing good can happen. And then we saw that. I mean, we saw the White Collar Tribe. And Ty, let's talk about this. We saw someone actually go for it, and then they immediately got ousted. Like, what did they think was going to happen? Would I, you, Ty, would you have done that? Would you have picked Here's the this? thing. As selfish a person, I mean, you know, as we all know, I'm an evil son of a bitch. But even I would realize that it makes no sense. I mean, they're going to realize how small that fucking bag is. And they're going to realize that they're... I mean, they got caught up. Was it Shirin that pretty much pointed out right away that casting is fairly simple? And, you know, the, the, the planners of the season are going to not give three options. It's going to be one option or the other option. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anybody who watched Survivor would fucking know that. And well, and then long, story that. Short, they're, long story short, it was very stupid. Very well, stupid. they're both terrible. It literally liars. got them voted yeah. out. Yeah, it they, literally got them voted out. They're terrible liars. And the idea of a neutral option, it's like, why the hell would they? Because he's like, well, there's no. repercussions of the good thing. Well, they're probably good repercussions, so you would still exactly. pick that. Because you're doing yeah, a good thing. Well, right. if we picked a good thing, there would have been a caveat. Well, no, that's the point of it being a good thing, is that yeah. there's no caveat. Yeah. Like, what I did find interesting, just as a general dichotomy, is that in the two groups, where the two people making the decision were like similar in age and similar like yeah the two young people from the white collar tribe go and make the decision and it kind of ostracized them right away you had the two older guys on the blue collar tribe go and do it and throughout the episode they kind of got ostracized and put to the outside because the women and rodney are getting together whereas on the third tribe you had will and Jen, who have nothing in common except for a love of sandwiches because Will's fat and Jen's probably high all the time. And yet, and yet, and yet those two are probably the best off of like those three groups. Yeah, the, the, the oh, yeah. What did they do? They weren't, you know, buddy buddy immediately afterward. I mean, I'm sure they get along, but they weren't shown being buddy buddy. Well, together. and also, I feel like their decision was Indian the easiest one. So hanging on. Joaquin as they're losing the challenge. Gee, who would have thought those two were close? Yeah. That was difficult to figure the fuck out. Well, I, I thought So would be smarter to attach herself to someone like Joaquin, but anyways, we're going to talk about it later. I do want to mention briefly on the Blue Collar Tribe. So, yeah. Sierra, though, was not trusting them, and I think that is going to be a future nail in the coffin. And at least let's talk more yeah. about kind of the Blue Collar Tribe dynamics. Sierra is already, you know calling Dan and Mike out. You have Mike eating a fucking scorpion. All right, Dan and Mike sunk because yeah. Rodney is building the girls' alliance. I want to hear from you, Elise. As a girl, how would you respond to Rodney and are the and are Dan and Mike sunk? Uh, well, Rodney annoyed me with some of his comments, but he seems to be doing okay-ish so far. At least he's not eating fucking scorpions and, like, throwing them up <laughs> two minutes later. So, I, like, they all seem like kind of, all the guys on that tribe seem like kind of a disaster. So it'll be interesting to see what happens once they actually go to tribal council. And I was actually going to ask you about this, Elise. It's, I could picture the girls on that tribe being like, okay, yeah, Rodney, we're with you. And then, you know, cutting him off the moment he's any You're real problem. You're ruining my top uh, people yeah. on this tribe. <laughs> yes, indeed. Right. I concur. I All concur. right, well then. 
Jack, I want to talk with you about the no collars because you're probably the most no collar out of all of us, okay? Definitely. All right. So, we have this amazing girl, Jen, who I'm going to marry. Let's just. <laughs> Are you going to so get her to be on the podcast? I'll get her to be on the podcast. Can we? And him? we had this amazing guy, Vince. <laughs> and coach 2. What? Yeah, Coach 2.0. Two. What don't did you take? Like that. What did you take yeah, of the relationship? Because I do think Vince came off looking bad, but I also think he had a little bit of a point. But, Jack, let's, let's me and you talk about this. What did you think? Yeah, I sort of agree on both of your parts that you just said there. Um, it's definitely something that Vince should be concerned with, like – if Jen is like attracted to Joe or likes him more than um, yeah. she likes Vince, but that's something you keep to yourself and you think about in your head. You don't go like the first day you meet some girl and be like, "Hey, do you find this guy hot?" Or like, "Is he harder than me?" Like, and as do you someone like who's done me? that before, it never works out. It doesn't yeah. work out. So it's something you keep like uh, you keep Being mindful jealous. Of. Less, yeah, yeah. You, yes. you got to keep mindful of it, but you don't confront someone on especially when you don't have a good rapport or any foundation of trust with them so well, i feel like even if he had if he had a good chance with jen it's now she's now has a bad taste in her mouth exactly. based on how vince approached her well, about if that. i was vince i would have gone and become joe's best friend and been like okay we, this could be a three-way for right now yeah, it seems like he might be in the other two too, waiting so. in the wings exactly. yeah yeah like that's always been my thing it's like i would rather not be a third wheel but if you're a third wheel early on that can still keep you safe and that's really what ultimately matters it's realizes that deaf lady has a tattoo under her arm that's weird <laughs> <laughs> Who Who oh yeah we're gonna oh we're gonna talk about her a little bit later when we talk about the episode preview and then right. i also want to talk She's about dead. um yeah. one of my biggest pet peeves in survivor and steven uh you're kind of a survivor historian so let's talk about this how many times have people been on a tribe of someone that knows construction and they still manage to ignore them um Quite often, but the very first instance I can think of is Australia, where Michael Scoopin wanted to build a shelter a certain way, and good old Kentucky Roger was like, bless <laughs> your heart, that's not how you do it. And <laughs> you just, you never circumvent the construction person. Well, Let them do their thing. It's always really, like, baffled me about survivors. I'm like, I understand everyone has your ideas, but my ideas as a non-construction worker are nowhere near as useful as the ideas of someone that's actual construction oh, worker. Yeah, I, 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 if I was there, I'd be like, you run free with that, you delegate what to do. To exactly. exactly, and I don't know why people have such an ego with it, especially yeah. in a game like Survivor. For me, like, if I'm going out to Survivor, if I'm going to live on an island for up to 39 days like i don't care how the shelter is i'll sleep on the floor like yeah. if it gets messed up you do whatever you want like you have the reins just take care of it i'm <laughs> and it's also as if people don't realize that just because someone leads you building the shelter it still doesn't mean you don't ha you can still vote them out first if they're fucking right. annoying like there's no mm -hmm. reason <laughs> it doesn't even mean they're the tribe leader it just means they're good at building shit right <laughs> like then they'll do the nicest shelter possible and then kick them out immediately thereafter exactly like yeah, that. you could, or you could pull a Rupert and intentionally try to drown your tribe. But <laughs> I'm gonna win this season one way or the other. <laughs> However, I do want to, uh, and not, I can. Uh, I'm opening this up to everyone. I do think it's interesting that we already have a Joe and Vince going at it, and I think that's going to be an interesting little rivalry that will end with Vince losing. But I wonder what kind of uh, damage is going to be. Uh, I'm too right right if we're picking sides already. You have an unathletic black person and a deaf lady who's weak on that tribe. So I think it's going to take a while. But it also time. can't be understated how probably fucking annoying Vince is. <laughs> Chances are, I mean, he, he shot his relationship with Jen to shit with, Jen, do you like me more? Do you like Joe more than me? Do you, uh, it's like, come on. Like, it is unusual yeah. to see somebody get information and then immediately run to somebody and tell them inappropriately. It is strange. <laughs> it's strange to see. Strange to see. Well, Vince sucks, so. Yes. Yes. Yes, he does. Now, and then we I do want to talk about Joe the Golden Boy. Um, is he our winner? No. Oh, He's, our Mal He's our Malcolm? He's our Malcolm. Because he was getting the hell of it at it. He starts the fire, he gets to bang Jen, and he solves the puzzle. Edgic is dead, as we know, so he's not the one. But they did also show... So is he the merge boot? I don't think he's the merge boot, per se. I mean, he's like Malcolm. Malcolm got to, like, the final four. He might get that far. I don't think that tribe 
I mean, I'll mention this all during my, you know, power rankings thing, but I don't think he wins. Long story uh, short. He also has I, that scene. I think it'll be a lot more telling tomorrow, uh, not tomorrow, next week when we get the previously on Survivor segment, because that's when if it's like, oh, yeah, and Joe did this and Joe did that, then it's like, OK, that's a good edit. But mm-hmm. he could just be getting like the LJ edit where he does all this stuff, mm-hmm. but it doesn't matter because he's going out. <laughs> he's going out early. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, let's talk a little bit more while we're at it. Let's just go ahead and let's just flush out kind of what we know about the no collars and all that fun stuff. So what's Haley doing, Ty? As an expert on women, what's Haley doing right now? Um, the smart thing on that tribe, she's just kind of blending in. She'll probably be, I mean, at this point, she's not doing anything to make somebody not like her. She's not needlessly promising sandwiches she can't deliver. She's not. <laughs> Uh, she's not wearing feathers in her hair and asking why don't people like me. She's not deaf. Oh, and uh, real she's quick, she's probably she's whoever the power couple ends up being. She'll probably be their third, mm-hmm. and she'll be less likely to be targeted. So she's not in a bad spot. I do so, also want to point out in Heroes vs. Villains, Coates I think was like, "Why don't people like me?" At one point in time, yeah, he was. I mean, so so feathers in your hair. Really a poor man's version of yeah. Coates. That's, so, that's yeah. looking at. Feathers in your sure, hair I'm, I'm beats sure if we ask Coach if he has sold coconuts, he would say, I have. I have. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And let's see. Uh, Will. The only thing is, Will, I was hoping he would be kind of a bigger character than what he yeah, was. I was hoping but instead, too. we got a lot of Dan. And that makes me think that Will is going to be kind of unceremoniously booted, you know, before the merge. Is that a fair assessment? And I'm opening this up to anyone. Yes. Um, I, yes. I actually have a different take. I think... At this point, maybe Will isn't being shown so much because he's not relevant to the current storylines. Um, so I don't necessarily mean, think that, that that bodes you know well or bad for him one way or the other. I think it's more telling what happens in the future episodes. So if he goes another two, three episodes without having much any content, then I'd say he's dead in the water. But um, And that I is true. I mean, him. after last ep- after last season, editing is kind of just completely out the window. <laughs> I'm hoping they did a much better job this season, and they've already had so a much more diverse uh, group of confessionals, but we'll see. Yeah. All right, so... I mean, he's better off than Dan, comparatively. That actually, and, 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 and that is what I want to talk about next. Dan, um... How... Dan is a super fan, right, Jack? Yeah, he's talked about how he's been... Like he was been one of the Beyond Survivors. Really? Did you say one, that, Jack? One episode one. That, Jack, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my entire life. <laughs> Dan being a stu- stupid fan. I am shocked he is already making that kind of mistakes. I mean, I thought it could be coming Why? sooner rather than You're later. You're aware that you could be a fan of Survivors since the beginning and still think Rupert's the greatest player of all fucking time, right? <laughs> <laughs> Did he think that? Maybe. Who knows? We don't know. We don't know who he idolized. You'll note that in his like video where he says, oh, I've loved Survivor forever, he's never pointed out who he loves from Survivor. And I think it's fairly obvious why they hid that. Because <laughs> he's not playing very well. And well, he, he's dead in the water, right? Oh, yeah. actually, his uh, contestant he's most like, he says Stephanie, Tony, and Rupert. So there, you <laughs> there we go. That, that's, Ooh, like, that's, 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 like, a, that's a rough... <laughs> <laughs> Will he dislocate his shoulder and make it all about him? Who knows? Will he open up a restaurant? Though. Yes. Who oh, the oh hell voted God. for me? <laughs> well, Everyone. okay, never mind. That actually explains a fair amount. <laughs> <laughs> so, Thank you, I, with all that being said, I do want to go ahead and let's talk about uh, the lovely white collar tribe in more detail, all right? <gasps> oh. Um, Max has a beard. So yes, yeah, Max does have a beard. Um... It is kind of sad, though, that they're the one tribe that couldn't get it, the fire going. Uh, we kind of do live in the post-postmodern era of Survivor, and people seem to be starting fires much quicker now. But, of course, the white-collar people couldn't do it. So, Ty, as the most white-collar one of us all, I want to go into your head, and I just want to talk about the dynamics of the white-collar tribe. Let's talk about uh, Max and all that fun stuff and how he seemed to be just hanging out in the back. Is that what Max you- is running the tribe. Pretty much. Okay, Whether that's care- going to matter long term, I don't know. Okay. Because Do you care to elaborate? Well, I mean, again, you want me to do who's 
doing best on each tribe and who's doing worst on each tribe. So if mm-hmm. I'm going to do that. As a, do you want me to just do that segment? Yeah, let's just go ahead. Let's just do that segment because okay. I feel like that's real blocking us. So Ty is going to quickly give us some power yeah. rankings. But uh, let's start with the uh, no-collar tribes since I think we're basically done with them today. Besides sure. me. Um, basically, my what I'll do for each of these is I'll reveal my second best, first best, and then obvious worst. Uh, my second best situation on the No Collar Tribe, based on who we saw a lot of this episode, is Jen. Uh, everybody seems to like Jen. Jen is fucking amazing, even though she smells bad. And I would imagine that her and Joe will be a power couple or in a dark horse. If if somehow Featherman stays in power, Jen will probably be fine there because he's an idiot and will keep her. Um Joe is an obvious front runner on that tribe. Not much more that needs to be said than what's already been said. Uh, my worst on that tribe is Nina because the rest of them are hippies and she's a housewife, so she really doesn't fit with them to begin with. And the preview of the next episode basically points that out. She's dead. She's fucking dead. Yes, indeed, it seems. Unless they don't go to tribal council next episode, but even so long term. You know, I mean, it's it's, it's unfortunate. I mean, it sucks because she's disabled and she's got the same thing that Christie's got going for her and that's sad and all that, but it, it doesn't seem likely that she'll last long. Uh, blue collar. Um, Dan's obviously fucked, so I don't... Do we really need to hash on that more? Mm-hmm. He's fucked. He's really, really fucked. Yeah. Uh, my second best is Rodney on that tribe. Uh, if everything goes according to his plan, he'll be running things because he's the only male that seems to have any power besides possibly doing. And that's what and that's what women like, right? Ty, they like a man to come in and tell him how to do everything, according to um, Rodney. Well, according to CBS, we all love Boston Rob, and that's what it's <laughs> like to be. So to that end, you know, there he is. My actual top person on that tribe, and this is a bit of a reach, seeing as how she was only featured in one confessional, and you weren't even sure if she had a confessional, but. I think Kelly's got a good read of the tribe. She knows that Dan's burying himself. She knows that she needs to relate to the young people. And let's put it this way. Dan will go first, at which point Mike's an idiot. He eats scorpions, but he's still strong and probably decent <laughs> challenges. And Rodney's obviously got a soft spot already for uh, Lindsay with all of her tattoos and all the interesting stories that I'm sure can be told. Uh, Kelly seems like a smart enough player. She's a cop. We all know how observant cops are. Uh, but uh, I could easily see her if she thinks that Mike needs to stay for challenge strength. And Sierra seems like she would just kind of go with the flow. I could easily see Lindsay getting picked off second and Kelly kind of asserting okay. that okay. spot. I could, I, I could see her doing well. I could all see right. her doing now well. Now let's move on to the white collars. Uh, well... First of all, that tribal council was, wait for it, so dramatic. (laughs) Sorry, it's it's out of my system now, I promise. Thank God she's gone first, because I would have beaten that horse to death. Um, You still are. We both know you still are. You're going to do that all all season. It's going to be so amazing. It is. (laughs) Uh, Joaquin's at the bottom, because he doesn't know how to fucking spell Carolyn. Jesus fucking Christ. (laughs) Carolyn. What the fuck? Honest to fuck. God, he's it, it just you know, you knew he was gonna suck. He had his slimy hair, like, yeah. well, back. It's just why well, think about just... Joaquin Ty. I do want to interrupt you a little bit, please. Probes yeah. was saying how Joaquin does so well. I'm like, I wouldn't trust that guy in the real world to begin with. I'm like, how does it's... anyone ever trust yeah. him? He I... just looking at him, I and I need this... Robert. He looks like a scumbag. yeah, like he looks like someone that would manipulate, like, and, and then the yeah, moment you would well, talk to him. Like... The moment he would talk to you, you'd be like, oh, wait, you're an asshole. Like, the I only don't... thing he's missing is like a vaudevillian mustache with curls on the end. <laughs> yeah. To make him look slightly more sinister. And... <laughs> yeah. That's what I thought um, was funny is he was like, everyone is so – I'm like, I bet a lot of girls put up with you because you're moderately attractive. But aside from that, I don't really see why anyone would ever listen to you. Exactly. And, well, and that proved its point. I mean he might survive past another tribal council because he's probably much stronger – in challenges, but who knows? We'll see. Uh, um, because there's that chance of that happening, the girls are not on my power rankings, even though Carolyn is fucking amazing and has an idol already, because she is smarter than so. Yeah. She is so, so much smart. Yeah. So. Uh. Uh, <laughs> but in no particular order, the 
people in the power rings for that tribe are Tyler and Max, uh, um, because they pretty much hold all the power next episode. Because Joaquin uh, probably won't vote with the girls because he's stupid, and the girls won't well, vote the girls aren't going to want to work with Joaquin. Exactly, I can't exactly. picture that. So they're they're in the middle. They control everything. Again, it's kind of like Spencer was in control along with Tasha on that shitty tribe, mm-hmm. which you know didn't mean anything. Didn't really help them. Who knows? But well, and uh, I- clearly they're in power over there. I like Max. I think oh, let's put it this way: Max's confessional in the uh, first segment there proved to be truly prophetic. Only an idiot would want to reach out for power, and then immediately the obviously stupidest person on that tribe reached out for yeah. power. Well, so then it's just perfect. It's just perfect. And he has a beard like Josh, which means <laughs> he'll probably re- mention honey badgers in the final trial. Be great. I do want to just say, I think out of everyone you mentioned that's in trouble, but be it Nina, be it Joaquin, be it Dan, I actually feel like Joaquin would have the hardest time getting himself out of trouble. I feel like on the other tribes, something else could happen to take the focus off like Nina or to take the focus off Dan. Yeah, I, was, I disagree I was with say. Dan. I think Dan is more fucked yeah. than but, anybody. Because Joaquin's strong. Joaquin will be good in challenges. So you think that that's going to outweigh the fact that no one's going to want to work with Joaquin? Hey, let's put it this way. I think they might not go to tribal again for a bit. <laughs> well, that's what I was thinking. Unless there's a tri- tribe swap, though, I don't see a Joaquin getting his way out of it. Oh, no. You see, he's, he's, he might get past Carolyn, maybe. Who knows? It's hard to yeah, say. I feel like... I feel like Joaquin will become a parody of maybe like a Silas or something like a really young fit guy who thinks he's the hot shit and then he's he gets right. Well, he two point oh. Yeah, but my thing is he already has had the rug ripped out from underneath him, which is like quicker than any Silas other time. Silas had some build up of power before he yeah yeah before Joaquin Teresa like, yeah. swiftly killed him. Well, Joaquin just was just like that stereotypical like lawyer, like a David Murphy type player that goes well. At this job where I'm the boss and the employees get paid to listen to me, they listen to me. So that means I'm really good at dealing with people. And it's like, no, you. But in reality, he's the boss from like a boss where he hits on Deborah, gets rejected. And... <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's the, it's the idea of like, okay, you're put in power because of some arbitrary system, but like now a... that, yeah, <laughs> and now that there's none of that structure there, you're kind of completely useless. Now let's let's talk more about Carolyn and yes. Stephen. <laughs> How let you talk oh, just Steven go oh, on a rant about her. I'm I'm just I, leaving all of Carolyn's I, I, I will say I had my doubts about Carolyn pre show completely. I was worried. I was like, she'll be a bit too abrasive and it'll bite her on the butt this early, but she's a hell of a lot more observant and a hell of a lot more perceptive than I gave her any credit for in pre show. And I am I am I am pulling the Carolyn bandwagon as far as I absolutely can. <laughs> I, I absolutely am rooting for her. So All right. that's kind of my rant. And she actually seems like she has a good head on her shoulders, which is good. Well, Jack, I, I want to talk a little bit about that tribal council, okay? So um, it was completely batshit crazy. We had people immediately throwing everyone under the bus. We had people going, you're in my alliance. I thought Carolyn actually was going to say I have an idol. I was hoping she wouldn't, and she wound up not doing it, but I, was, I thought that was going to happen. Um, there was a moment, though, where... Joaquin was like, Joaquin, so Max and Tyler are the core of four. So Sharon and Carolyn now know that Tyler and Max made that deal behind the back. Is that is that going to affect them in the future? Uh, you mean like her, Max is in Tyler? Yeah, yeah like uh, Carolyn, Sh- Sharon, Tyler, and Max. Do you think they're going to be affected by that way down the line if they even last that long? The fact that Max and Tyler went behind their backs to make the core of four group or whatever. Um. I wouldn't – maybe a little bit, but I wouldn't say it's that significant because they could see that they might have been pressured by So and Joaquin or they just agreed to an alliance just because you're always supposed to agree to an alliance. Um, and due to the fact that they also backed um, Shireen and Carolyn up at this tribal council with their votes, I think that'll show them that, like, hey, this was just – that wasn't just, a real thing. Just like, we're, we're actually with you, yeah. yeah. Right. So uh, did you think – were you kind of shaking in your seat when Carolyn didn't play her idol? Because I was expecting her to. Yeah, I was. I mean, I texted Stephen like, "Why didn't she? Why didn't she play it?" Um, after <laughs> like I saw that she didn't, because during the tribal council, she, when she was defending herself, she seemed really frantic, like she was nervous and she was scared, or mm-hmm. she was being really emotional about it. I was like, okay, this definitely means she's gonna play it. And other people were talking about how, um, like Carolyn was like the weak link. 
Yeah. And then it comes time to like Jeff Ropes, like if anyone has a hidden media idol, do you want to play it? And then she just sits there and looks yeah. around. It was she, well, she looked at Joaquin and So and then didn't do anything. I was Elise, like, why did she not play the idol? Well, I think there's so much that we don't see. Like the tribal council lasts so much longer than the little segment that we get to see. And then on top of it, like aside from last season and like the last couple seasons, we had a few switches where they changed the vote at tribal council. But I think she had a pretty good feeling going into tribal council and just decided to stick with that. Like we saw her look over at Tyler and he seemed to give her some like nod of approval and she just was okay with that. So I, I think well, she probably never was going to play the idol and she just got frantic at tribal because it's their first tribal and it was insane. Okay, well, I have a different idea. And Ty, I want to hear your thoughts on this. I feel like she didn't play the idol because she knew that if even if she played the idol, uh, it would only buy her one more round. But then no one would trust her. And if everyone voted for her, she's screwed anyway. So it's like I might as well hold on to this idol because later in the game it could get me really far. Whereas right now it can only buy me, you know, just a little bit of time. I mean, maybe she had that much more thought. I mean, yeah. let's put it this way. If any of us have gone through the trouble of getting out on the fucking island to play the game and we can get three more days, I think we'll fucking play the idol and get mm-hmm. three more days and see what other shit can happen. So I don't really buy that theory that much. I see what you're saying, and it makes logical sense, but we're talking about people sleeping in, like, you know, shittily made huts and and starving themselves and not necessarily having fire, particularly in this particular case. Mm-hmm. So I don't think that they're thinking logically. I think, I think that the beard and the big man told her she was going to be safe, and she trusted that, and to that end, why waste your idol in the first tribal council? Now, did you think Tyler told Max that she has an idol? Uh, I don't know. It's hard to say. I mean, we haven't really seen that working dynamic as of yet, so I'm not sure. If I was Tyler, I wouldn't necessarily feel the need to bring it up now. I might mention it um, next episode if I'm afraid of that threesome yeah. threesome and I want to keep walking. I might casually mention it then. You know, but I don't see why I don't see why Tyler would want to keep Joaquin. Because, well, here's the thing: Joaquin's a great meat shield. Like if I was playing, I would want to keep Joaquin as as long as possible. He's a oh. giant meat shield, and he'll get targeted because a he'll say stupid shit, which will make people hate him more than he hate, they hate me, and, and b he'll win us challenges, and c because he'll win us challenges, people want him dead more than me even more. Okay. So to that end, I could see them wanting. Well, I think Ty. I think if I hope not for yeah. the sake of our sanity, yeah. he sucks. I think if oh. White Collar goes to the next tribal council, there is a chance of Joaquin saying. But I think if they win just one challenge in between going to tribal council, I think Joaquin's fucked. Probably so. I, I now, don't... I am going to jump to Stephen real quick, and this is going to be kind of about some pre-show stuff. So Stephen, oh. pre-show, yeah. Jeff Probst was like. So is amazing, and Joaquin is is amazing. How much are you loving what just happened? Uh, I I will say from a karmic standpoint, it's really nice to see Probst sort of have to eat his own words. Um, <laughs> just because even from Joaquin, just knowing what he was pre-show, I, I mean, yeah, I, when, when it, it boggles was, my mind that yeah, Probst I was, was like, back did Probst Joaquin. meet the same guy that I saw? And like, maybe I'm being too harsh, but like I said, I would never trust that guy. No, I no, would. There's just like, something about him. When yeah. you look at him, you, you just sort of <laughs> – he just looks so disingenuous. You're like, I, no, I, I can't. I can't. <laughs> Anyways, so guys, let, what, is there anything else we need to cover with this episode? Because I feel like we've done a pretty good job analyzing it and what's okay. going to happen next. I do want to point out, Jen seems to be the narrator for the No Collar Tribe. I know. I like her a lot. Yeah. She's fun. I love Jen. And then on the Blue Collar Tribe, the narrator seems to be Dan. But Dan's completely screwed. And then on the White Collar Tribe, there doesn't appear to be a narrator. So, I think almost Carolyn has done. Yeah, I think we're supposed to. So, do you guys think Carolyn would be the narrator? Okay, but then Carolyn also has more of a positive narrator. So, yeah, we'll see where that goes. All right, guys. If there's nothing else, let's go ahead and let's do the part everyone's been waiting for, and let's pick our winners. Okay, so the order we're picking our winners on is based off of placement for last season, and the better you did last season, the lower you are picking. So the very first person picking is Jack, because Jack picked Kelly last season. Now, Jack, who is your, who are you picking to be your winner? Right, so um, I didn't really pay attention to pre-show, so I didn't have any ideas of who I was rooting for or 
any previous notions of who's going to be good. I just basing it on the first episode. Um, and one of my thoughts was Max. So I don't know if it's beard envy or the fact that I, I enjoy it. Fuck you! <laughs> Why would you take the beard? I haven't picked yet. I'm talking about right. possibilities. All right. Um, <laughs> um, but I enjoyed his witty banner <laughs> and survivor jokes. But I'm actually going to pick um, someone else on that tribe, and I'm going to pick Shireen as my winner pick. I don't know if she's my winner pick or my favorite. Um, probably more so my favorite than I think she has the best shot at winning. Um I just like her vibe. I enjoyed some bits and pieces I saw of her in the episode, and I thought one of the articles I read. And she wasn't booted first. Shireen is great. I love Shireen. She's fantastic. I liked how um, originally they were all going to target Shireen because she, like, screwed up in the puzzle, and then, like, 30 seconds later, like, her name wasn't mentioned at all (laughs) for the rest of the episode. In terms of boot, they all decided to go with Carolyn instead. So I think she's a low-key character. She's... Got a good head on her shoulders, and she's a fan of the show, so I'm going to go right. with Shireen. That seems like a pick. wise choice. I hope you do better than picking Kelly. All right, <laughs> next on the list is Ty. Ty, you picked beard. the, gin- the ginger beard. gay. Beard, beard, You're beard. picking Max. Beard, You're going to pick beard, the ginger beard, beard now. Beard, beard. All right. Uh, I got to go with the beard because I don't think it, it was either him or Joe, and I really don't think Joe's going to win. I think Joe was Malcolm, and to that end, I think Max might be Cochran with – an amazing beard. So, right. Max. That seems fair. And because Alex and Patrick are also are not here, Steven, you're the next one. Um, so, my... I'm already writing heart... Carolyn's name, so... No, I, my, I, I was going to say, my heart was telling me Carolyn, but I, I feel like a lot of the content she got was circumstantial. Remember um, when you didn't pick a hag and you lost I'm, anyone? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go out of left field and go with Jen. Damn it! <gasps> God I damn it, Steven! Damn, you so no now. God damn you, Steven! <laughs> I, I mean, I picked John last season, so yes. No I hate you so much right now because that was I my pick, and I do not have a backup pick now. I have to think. <laughs> oh my God! If it's any consolation, I was about to pick Joe, but I figured he just wouldn't have the longevity. <sighs> Thanks, Steven. I apologize, Colin. That's cool. This is just as bad as uh, last season, me being like, okay, guys, time to do your win picks. I was like, oh, we did them without you, Colin. You pick last. So, should I pick another just random person and just see how that hope for the best. Like, I mean, yeah. you got Wu and Keith, so that's not actually a bad track record. Yeah. yeah. Mm, let me look at the contestants. Let's pick the stupidest person available. <laughs> Uh, no, but I actually want to like do fairly well as something. But you have been doing fairly well. Like, yeah. the stupidest person available. Someone on the blue collar trap. No one's picking anyone from there yet. Hmm. Like the second hottest. The second hot. I don't know. I don't know if I want to pick uh, Rodney. You know what? I'm gonna pick Tyler. Oh. I feel like that's an okay choice. Yeah. We'll you see. Would have picked Jen if you yeah. yeah, I would have picked Jen if I could. And my random WTF choice would have been uh, Kelly. But I don't know. I feel like she actually has a shot at winning, and I wouldn't know what to do if I won. Uh, and now let's talk about the prizes. Now, if you are no okay. collar. Yes. Oh, wait. At least you get a pick. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, I forgot about you. How did that happen? <laughs> Great to feel loved here. Uh,. I'm just going to go with Joe, I guess. I don't think he's going to last long, but you guys picked my favorite, so... <laughs> Joe will last a while. He just won't last. Well, at least last time you got to pick your winner on, like, when there was three weeks left, so I don't want to hear it. <laughs> there was, like, five people left. It was final five. It's like, oh, I guess I got to pick someone. And you barely beat me. Okay. <laughs> So let's go over the prizes. If you pick someone on the No Collar Tribe and you win, I will send you a animal in the mail like be it some ants or like some pro- i'm not gonna send you any bees or anything but it might be ants um it could be i heard you can mail like hamsters it might be something like that okay <laughs> now if you're a blue collar you will receive a home depot gift card for ten dollars to get all the tools you need and if it's white collar i will uh buy a stock in your names if you have a stock account like, I'll spend $10 on whatever stock you like. Or I will send you a DVD of The Wolf of Wall Street. 
Yeah, I'm gonna go with the stock nice. and then like make bank of Colin's small <laughs> investment. Well, basically, the stock is me giving you ten dollars. So, <laughs> <laughs> but okay. So those are the prizes. I hope I remember them. I was thinking about incorporating a Lego set. But we'll see. All right. <laughs> Now, is there anything else? Are there any soapboxes anyone wants to stand on before we wrap things up for tonight? Uh, I think we all did a good episode. And yeah. I'm, I'm happy that we didn't drop the ball like Des Bryant in <laughs> playoffs in January. Fuck you, Patrick. Fuck you. All right. <laughs> Love you. And bro. I really oh. hope now someone put no color wins so they can get a bunch of ants. <laughs> Why did I pick no color? Yeah, really. No, I'm regretting really sure it. Well, but at least okay. what it'll be is I'll send you the books and the ants in the same package. How <laughs> expensive is it to send ants to France? I wonder. <laughs> well, we will find out. We will find out. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for listening. Night. Night.